sun is shining inside my heart The light is breaking in through the dark The fragrance of love and joy is here And all I want is to just draw near In the presence of the Lord there is joy And the joy of the Lord is my strength in the presence of the Lord there is joy And the joy of the Lord is my strength Jesus, it fills my days, and I am happy and sing his praise. My affection is fixed above, and I am living inside of love. In the presence of the Lord, there is joy, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. In the presence of the Lord, there is joy, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. I will sing, make my heart glad, and I will dance. I won't be sad in the presence of the Lord. There is joy, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. In the presence of the Lord, there is joy. Oh goodness, I wrote that song in the middle of when I didn't feel joy, but the joy came. And some of you, you're going to enjoy today because I believe God's gonna flow through Stephen and Eloy and Steph and I just to bring you answers for your life and bring joy. I'm so thankful for you. We are very thankful for you. We love you. Our hearts, I just think of what Apostle Paul said. He said, you're in my heart and I'm in yours. And no matter where we go or what we do, you're in our heart and I hope we're in your heart. I just wanna thank you again for your faithfulness. Thank you for your consistency. Thank you for your celebration and giving to other people. Together, we've seen God do great things, and we will continue to see God do 
great things in people's lives, getting his goodness, getting his joy, getting his peace into people's lives. Thank you so much. Once again, I want to thank you for your tithe and your offering and your faithfulness to give. I bless you in Jesus' name. You can go onto the website to give your tithe and offerings and continue to be faithful. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for every person that's listening, that's watching, that's in the sanctuary. I pray you'd surround them with your peace and let them feel your love and your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. And here's my husband, Pastor Stephen Marshall. This is going to be exciting. We're continuing and finishing and landing our series, Joy to the World at a Perfect Time, with some of the most amazing people I know on planet Earth. Our good friends, Pam, and our good friends, Stephanie Martinez, Eloy Martinez, worship leaders, speakers extraordinaire. This is going to be so good, you guys. And of course, we always have the Holy Spirit with us when we're turning to God's Word. So let's right now invite the Holy Spirit and let's get down to business. Precious Holy Spirit, help us. We welcome you. Lord, unfold the Word of God into our hearts, into our lives, our minds. And Father God, as we step into a new frontier, a new year, God, we declare that our lives will never be the same, but because we're walking with the light, not just with us, but in our hearts. Father God, going before us, you go before us, you come up behind us. You are our covering, our strong shield, our great reward, all in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus, amen. You guys, yeah. thank you for doing this what with us. What a pleasure. Yeah, Glad to be us. with you. Oh, we it's love it. Honor. I got my beautiful wife Pam with me. This is going to be exciting, talking about joy to the world. So in review, because I want to get down to, you guys got some beautiful things to share, all three of you. But, you know, we had in review, and I know that you guys have been taking notes. I'm sure you have been taking notes. We learned that there's no substitute for the authentic good news ingredients of joy, true joy. Here's what we've learned so far when we've talked about joy to the world in this season. First of all, the authentic good news, God kind of good news joy, has nothing to do with Santa Claus which is kind of good because I think you're all tired of hearing Santa Claus songs, right? There's this song that we all hear at Christmas time. I think it's called Santa Baby, and it, the lyrics go like this. Santa honey, a 54 convertible too, light blue. I'll wait up for you, dear Santa baby. You know, and the reality is we are so easily distracted from the real message of joy for the whole year because joy is supposed to be a 365 thing, not just a... December 25 thing. There's nothing wrong with material things and beautiful gifts, but they can never give us true joy. That's the first thing we learn. Secondly, we're called to live a life of rejoicing. That means activating joy in our lives and being a distributor of it, a carrier of joy. You know, to me, I think that's so good, Pam, that we've been entrusted not just with the message, the good news, but to carry Jesus' joy for ourselves, but for others, for our families, for our friends, for those who are lost in a hurting world. You know, before the very first Christmas ever occurred in the world, there was a, it was hungry, it was cold, it was waiting for the true light. That light was Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, and the extraordinary gift He brought was His joy, all packaged up in His good news. Not only do we get His joy, but we also get to carry His joy. So, Pam, you're such an expert at reading Luke 2. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to read verses 9 through 11. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them and among them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For in this day in the city of David, there is born to you a Savior, the Messiah Christ the Lord. You guys, I always have to laugh when I read that. Every time I read it, I'm always thinking, in the glory of, the, of God shone, the angels showed up, and light, and, and the shepherds, and I always want to read, and the shepherds were ecstatic with joy, and they were like, this is awesome. But no, they were terrified. <laughs> they were terrified, yeah. And, and I think we need, to re, like, we need to come to grips with this. God wants to bring good news into our life. For this new year, God wants to bring extraordinary, amazing good news. And the truth is, it's going to kind of shock and scare 
the carnal side of you, the, the unbelieving, fearful side of you will be kind of like, uh, that, that's a little bit too good. That's a little too sweet. You know, I want to back up from that. And the truth is we need God's good news and we need to be like what the angel said, not be afraid. Look, because this is not a seasonal gift. Pam and I, we have dear friends in Grand Rapids that own tree, uh, Christmas tree farm, and that's seasonal, you know, and even this year, they ran out of Christmas yeah. trees, if you can believe it's it. It's like with my family. Oh. It's amazing, but that's seasonal, but joy, joy from God, from Jesus, through Jesus, is a 365, 24 hour a day commodity. It is joy, it's an energy, it's a power, it's a strength that never is failing. Yes. It happened once upon a time for a moment we call Christmas, but it is an all year long gift, an all lifelong gift. Yes, you can have your cake and eat it too. Contrary to culture that says you can't, you can have your cake and eat it too. So also we downloaded from God's word this aspect of joy that the wise men in Matthew 2 saw this particular star. And Pam, I liked how you put it. They saw a compass. It was a compass, a guiding light for them to get to the Savior. Pam, if you don't mind reading us Matthew 2, verse 10. And they saw the star, and when they saw it, they were thrilled with ecstatic joy. Hey, the wise men called the star his star, Jesus' star, the King of the Jews, right? The wise men understood something that we all need to learn. We all need a guiding light to take us forward, to give us hope, to finally have that great joy, that ecstatic joy. Hey, let me put it this way. No compass, no joy. You know, there was a TV show that where there was, they called soup it Nazi, yeah. Soup Nazi. <laughs> and it was like, no soup for you. right. At a certain point, he was kind of just discriminating whoever he just didn't like. It was like, you, Eloy, no soup for you. <laughs> well, here's the truth. Jesus comes along. We come to him. We say, please, sir, can I have some more soup? And he goes, joy for you, everybody, joy for everyone, right? That's the wonderful thing about Jesus. It's for whosoever will. It doesn't matter if you're rich, you're poor, you're black, you're white, if you're female, male, it doesn't matter who, young, old, it doesn't matter if you're traditional, if you're contemporary. Jesus has got joy for That's us. It right. doesn't matter where we came from. It doesn't matter how broken our lives are, how sinful our lives have been, how many mistakes I've made, how many times I've fallen and banged my face on the ground. It doesn't matter. Jesus says, whosoever, you want joy? Stephen, you want joy? I got joy for you. You see, we've confused pleasure with joy. People chase pleasure and they get no joy. People eat the treats and then they feel buyer's remorse because no matter how tasty it is, it's not fulfilling, right? Throughout the Christmas holidays, people eat more, they drink more, they indulge more. And yet hospitals and social workers, my mom was a nurse. Uh, she will tell you, I mean, many times I heard even as a boy growing up, how many suicide cases were at the hospital. It would just, it would floor, it would exponentially increase at Christmas time the suicide attempts. Why? Because people are desperate. They're depressed. They're in despair looking for joy. And it's not just among the disadvantaged. Some studies show that more suicide attempts are in wealthier neighborhoods, if you can believe. Why? Because I think people realize this stuff is not doing it for me. There's nothing else to go to. I've got all the stuff and all the good feelings, all the pleasures, and I still don't have joy. Stuff and material possessions and status is not joy. So, Stephanie, I, I want to get to you because, you know, we're realizing here that pleasure is not, it does not equal joy. And you've got a great story. Um, I, I love hearing, you know, the, the Bible says that God is unwilling to do without a cheerful giver. And you've got a great story about joy in the giving. In the giving. And to kick that off, let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart 
is in his gift. Oh, I like that. I love I like that. that. I love that. Because, you know, you you think like, well, it's the holiday season. I'll throw a little bit in the Salvation Army can, <laughs> right, as we're going in the, the store or whatever. But God wants our heart attached to our gifts yeah. or else it's not really a, a thoughtful gift, is it? And I remember besides, um, you know, giving tithe and offering, which we always do, there was a season in my life where the Lord challenged me and kind of gave me an assignment. I think the Holy Spirit's a teacher, so he gives homework. Yeah. So he gave me homework. That's good. And one of my homework assignments financially was to each month set aside a certain amount of money, and it was called my bless money. And every month I would ask him, who do you want me to give this to? What organization needs this this gift? And I would do always do it anonymously. So I would just it was just kind of an exercise in listening and obedience. Okay. So I I asked um, this one month where this money should go to, and he told me he showed me a person who was on the worship team with me at the time. So I I planned to give that gift, but he also gave me. Um, a message that he wanted to go with it, which was odd, but he gave me specific instructions that I was supposed to type out a certain uh, one-line message on this piece of paper, and I tucked the, mon the money inside the paper. I print. I um, typed out her address, because I didn't even want her to recognize my handwriting, sent it off, and I just did that. I'm like, well, that was weird. You know, sometimes he asks you to do some unconventional things. So a couple weeks later, it was a Wednesday night at church, and we were sitting there, and um, this person happened to be leading worship uh, with me on the team that night. And there was an opportunity for people to share God stories, just some things that God had been doing in their lives. And this girl stands up, and she said, a couple weeks ago, I was going through a really hard time. I was discouraged. I had been praying about a situation. And I, I, I said the words, do you even hear me when I call? And she said, my heart was so, um, so discouraged and, and questioning God. She was like, that afternoon, I went to my mailbox and I opened this letter and in it was a money gift and there was one line typed on the paper, and it said, just to let you know, I hear you when you call. Wow. He had me type that message before she had even said that, so that, because he knew that this girl on this day would need not just money, but she would need a message that communicated the fact that he loved her, that she was on his radar, that he was well aware of where she was at and what she was asking for and praying for, and that she indeed hear, she, he did hear her when she called. And that's the beauty of giving. And it's not just when our hearts are in, it's when God was in it. And I'm telling you, I was sitting right next to her as she's sharing this story. And I was overwhelmed inside. I'm like, don't be cool, be cool. Because I didn't want her to know that I was a part of that. But inside my heart was jumping and screaming up and down, not about what I did, but about the fact that God gave her a gift and I got to be a part of it. He actually let me partner with him in giving to send not just money, because giving is far more than money. Giving is a message of God. Yeah. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. And it was such an incredible moment moment because this girl got to receive joy, but my joy was exploding on the inside and I'm, I'm blinking very quickly to blink tears away so that she doesn't see that I'm crying or there's no hint of what was going on there. But here was God let me partner with him yeah. in giving and bringing incredible joy to another one of his kids. Oh, Stephanie, that's so beautiful. I feel like right now there's there's two different types of people listening. There's somebody right now that does not feel 
They've been believing that same lie that God doesn't hear their heart mm -hmm. and doesn't, God doesn't notice them. And then there's somebody else that's really feeling an instruction from your example that this is going to be their new year, that they're going to become like what you read in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, giving thoughtfully, intentionally, with a purpose. So I, I'm just going to ask you, just would you just pray for both of those people right now? Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for for the ones that feel discouraged right now, that feel like they have been praying, they've been crying out, they've been asking, they don't know what else to do and they just feel like they're not being heard and they're, they're wondering and they're questioning. God, I ask in Jesus' name that you would just communicate the fact that they are on your radar, that you are not unaware of the situation at hand in their lives. Father, I pray that you would bring your incredible encouragement through many different vehicles to just say, just to let you know, I hear you when you call. And Father, I also pray for those that, that have this intention to give. And I ask that you would cause each one of us to be sensitive, to listen to you and to obey you quickly in all those things, recognizing the fact that as a, a good father, you like to participate and you allow us to participate in what your heart is to do for people. So I pray that you would help us to walk out in obedience those steps and those things and assignments that you give us to do that are intended to encourage your people and increase your kingdom for the glory of your name. Amen. 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 That's so, so good. good. Man, so good. either way, I felt like we should have had like a B3 right. kind of going there at the end, right? Yeah. We're having church, brother. <laughs> Woo! Either way, I want you to, like a couple of weeks ago, man, you just dropped a bomb on me. I want you to talk a little bit about some of the, you, you've, you've done some battles and some war against fear, I feel like, especially in the last 12 months. And just talk a little bit about how that you weaponize joy. Yeah, it's uh, it's been quite the year, right, with with everything that's going on. But in my world, it's like the enemy, um, he just wanted to come at me in my thoughts. You know, uh, I'm getting older, I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not to the half point yet of being 50. I'm not there yet. But, you know, there's just different things. And it, it, it just starts with a, a little a seed, right? A little thought that he plants. And, you know, it, if you're not careful, those, those can get weeds in your thoughts and, and really start to torment you in areas. So, you know, I'm doing everything I can to be proactive and just really ask the Lord, like, show me the areas that I need to adjust or make tweaks in. So, um, you know, I've, I began to do that. And, you know, it uh, it involves going to do some doctor visits, right, and get some things known. You know, God uses the doctors, so uh, amen for them and for their help. Because, but I know who my ultimate physician is. Mm -hmm. But God was directing me to go ahead and get these appointments underway and uh, and just so you know what you don't know, so to speak, medically speaking. And so in these procedures or in, in an appointment that I had, you know, it's in, it's in the hospital, you know, there's a lot going on. So it just becomes sometimes very, you know, un, you know, unknowing. You don't know what you don't, you don't know what's coming. It's, unner it's unnerving, you know. Um, it's intense, thoughts. right? It's, it's, it's intense. intense, you know, and in the moment, the word joy is kind of the furthest thing away. It's not like a happy moment where we're going to do cartwheels and excitement and we want the balloons to come in. It's, uh, it's very, it's different. But it was in that moment that the word joy stuck in my head and in my heart. And like it says in Psalms 1611, you will show me the path of life in your presence mm -hmm. is fullness of joy mm -hmm. and your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. That's so good. And in that moment, I thought, man, I feel the furthest from joy. But it took that thought process to me to know what my belief system really was in. And I, I Pam wrote a song, mm -hmm. There is Joy. You know, in the presence of the Lord, there is joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm -hmm. And I took that word and I just meditated it over and over and over. And I sung it in my heart, in my mind, my spirit. And I was like, Lord, no matter what I'm going through, no matter the results that may appear on paper or what, I just knew that 
just singing that wash. I literally felt those words washing over me, washing over me, driving out the fear, driving out the the unknowns, driving out any doubts that I had for my the plans for my life. I just kept rehearsing that. I can't, I felt like it was um that was my medicine at that moment. Mm. You know, they may have had an IV going in me, you know, keeping me hydrated, but the Lord had his joy washing over me, washing over me. And it really gave me strength to walk through that moment. And it just, it began to sit in like, you know, there are times that it doesn't seem like, you know, the rainbows and the, and the balloons are coming out. But that's a time where we armor up and we know that the, the word of the Lord, the joy is our strength and we can rest in that. You know, the facts that may appear on paper, on paper, they're interchangeable, but God's truth is solid and yeah. never changes. Yes. And that really uh, brought me through that time. Wow, brother. That's man. so good, man. Uh, cue the B3 again. <laughs> 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 getting a little gospel, getting a little Southern gospel here. That's awesome. Pam, um, these are so, this is so good. Uh, you know, I know in the last five years, it probably been five of the toughest years of our life, you know, our married life together. And um, we've gone through a lot of goodbyes. I, I want you to, <laughs> without crying, <laughs> I want you to talk a little bit uh, about just using joy to overpower and overcome grief and sorrow. Yeah, I, and I, I'm thinking of Isaiah 61, 3 right now. It says, uh, to grant a, a consolation, a comfort and a joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament or a garland of beauty instead of ashes and the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of heaviness and being burdened and falling apart. And, you know, Steph was, was talking about that. You were talking about that, Eloy. But there's times that almost the grief within two years, within a couple years, before that, there were some things that were just really challenging, some disappointment, some pain, some things that, that came and that were so heavy that I was trying to overcome already. And then within two years, my rock star, I call them mom and dad, amazing, talented ministers of God out there just full time. Suddenly, just like that, within two years, both went to heaven suddenly. And you could feel like, almost like, you know, when you have hot tea, hot water, and then you put the tea bag in and that tea infuses into the hot water and every part of the water is infused with, with the tea. Well, it felt like all of a sudden my body was starting to be infused and take, take that grief and that sorrow. And I just stood up and I just commanded. I started speaking to my, in the middle of the night, my mind and my body. I, I said, mind and body, I command it. Will and emotions, I command you to reject the sorrow. We're going to grieve. It's okay to cry. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. I cry, you go on. But there's a difference between a letting it infuse you, cripple you, and become a spirit. Mm -hmm. And so as it infused me, I would just say, nope. I said, no, mind and body, I command you to reject the sorrow. The joy of the Lord come, mind and body, I command you to receive the peace, the love, and the joy of Jesus right now. And I could feel that. It's, it's a supernatural thing, and like it's not the balloons. It's, it's this solid strength that, that's it's grace, it's joy, it's, it's love, it's comfort. It's peace all at once. But it was like that determination of me just speaking to myself like King David yeah. and saying, no, 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 you're not going to, because I see too many people, there's a difference between grieving and sorrow. We all do that. Mm -hmm. But then I, I've also seen people get sick. Mm -hmm. They can't be even a blessing to their family. Some people even commit suicide because the grief infuses them. And I just feel like saying to you, some of you have been infused with grief. It's you're going to sorrow, cry. It's okay. But you need to stand up right now. There's people that need you. God's got more for you in this life. And you have to speak to your mind and body right now and say, no more grief, no more sorrow. We don't sorrow like the world sorrows. The word says, the word mm -hmm. says that, right, Steph? Yeah. And you have a word. There's something you have right now it does. just to say to them, I feel. Yeah, I believe that difference. Um, we can choose, our bodies are not intended to carry grief. Right. We're not built for it. 
Our bodies are not suited for it. And really, the, the word says that blessed are those who grieve mm -hmm. because they'll be comforted. Yes. So there's a blessing in the grief, but it has to be released out of us. You don't hold on to it. Grieving is the purpose to exchange. Yeah. So you grieve so that you can receive comfort. Yeah. So you don't stay yeah. living right. in the grief. Amen. You only grieve to receive. Right. That's why we do it. Our bodies are not built to carry it. Right. And it can destroy us from the inside yeah. out. It can suck away all life, starting with your spirit and oozing out, just like you said, into our physical body. And it is not honorable no. to God. Do, do we want to honor God? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's honorable to receive his comfort and it's honorable to receive his joy, right? Honey? Absolutely. That's so good. Both you guys, that's just, it's so spot on that, you know, like joyless living, we need to realize joyless living is, is the result of living without good news. So, you know, when Jesus was teaching on the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, he, he said this, he said, blessed are they that mourn because they will be comforted. Mm. So in other words, there's no comfort if you're not filled. So you know, you, when you mourn, there's a vacancy in your life. But in that moment of vacancy, you, it's meant to pull in the Holy Spirit, pull in the comfort, as you said, stuff of God, to pull in everything that God's supplying and joy. Yes. You know, I know it's hard to imagine, but the joy of the Lord is our strength, as you pointed to, Eloy. And I mean, in those times of mourning, in those times of sorrow, you must pull in the joy because if you don't, you can start building an identity around your brokenness and around your, your lack and around your, your all dress, here I am all dressed in black and you're all dressed in black. You know, you can start building an identity around being the man or the woman all dressed in black. And that's not what God has for us. It, we're, it's meant to signal, God, I got a need over here. You need to fill it. Yes. Because every time a lung expels air, it's already set up to breathe in new air. Not water, air. You got to breathe in the air. So joyless living is living without the good news, but praise God, we go into this new year with good news. Yeah. We got good news. You know, like when you're good news focused, you are not only sourcing God's joy, but you are yourself a source of joy. You can read that in John 15 and 11. Jesus literally said, I've said these words to you so that my joy might be in you and that your joy, you notice when his joy is in us, we start to take possession of it and now it becomes my joy. Mm -hmm. So my joy can spill out over onto others. And that's a beautiful thing. Great joy is fulfilling in a person's life. It shows up. It affects your choices. It affects your words. People who have joy tend to rejoice. That means they speak the good over and over and over, not the bad. They don't rehearse the bad. They rehearse the good over and over. This is what the Lord did, just like Stephanie was doing. This is what the Lord, this is how the Lord used me. This is how the Lord directed me. Look at what the Lord has done. You see, you live full. You're not hungry all the time, but you're content. So things like um, temptations, lust, coveting, jealousy, envy, many other temptations, they're powerless against you because you live life full of God's joy, right? Nehemiah 8 verse 10 says this, and be not grieved and depressed. Like Pam said, it doesn't mean you don't cry. It doesn't mean you don't have this moment when you say goodbye to somebody where you feel the grief. That's not what it's saying. It's saying, don't be grieved in that you live there. You set up camp and this is my new residence. Do not be grieved and depressed for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. The ingredients to living filled, strengthened, directed. I want to give you seven Christmas gifts that God has already provided for all of us right now that you can open them now. Like, how about that? Christmas gifts going into the new year that you can celebrate, enjoy right now. They're God's gifts. And let's just do this, you guys. Let's go around the table. We've kind of gone over this, and we'll just kind of share them one by one. So seven Christmas gifts that God has for you right now that you can take advantage of. Number one is good news, right? The angel announced it for all of humanity. It wasn't just for the shepherds. It's for every person. And that good news always, always, always overpowers the bad news. What would number two be, Pam? Number two is great joy. <laughs> God anointed his son Jesus to bring the ingredients of great joy. So you got good news of... 
Great, Great joy. joy. What a gift. Stephanie. Peace on earth. Ooh, when we glorify God in heaven, we experience peace on earth earth. You know, the whole world's looking for peace right now. It is. The whole world's trying to figure out peace. Every neighborhood, every community, every city, every town, every country is trying to get, uh, trying to hedge their bets on how do we get some peace going on here? Because things are a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Yes. And without the Prince of Peace, honey, you ain't got no peace. Right. So number one, the gift from God is good news. Number two, great joy. And number three, peace on earth. Eloy, what do you got, my brother? God's good will. Love it. As Jesus came to authorize God's good will and plans for us. Look, you know what? God has amazing plans for each one of us. But Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And we're fooling ourselves. We're kidding ourselves if we think we can fulfill our God-given design without the author Good, right? giving us that will and that plan. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that's a gift from God right now. You see, the thing is, you don't have to deserve God's good will. Jesus paid the price so that we get what he deserves. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, with boldness, I can walk into my father's presence and say, Father, I want what Jesus paid for me. And one of those things he paid for me is your good plan for my life, your good will for my life. So we're going into a new year. We get to have God's good will for our life, but we got to step into it. Like, I mean, this, it isn't automatic. We got to authorize it and say, yes, Lord, I receive the ingredients. I receive this gift. So good news, great joy, peace on earth. Number four, God's good will. And number five, as Eloy was talking about, fearless living. Doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't mean that just all the circumstances are rosy, but we can have fearless living because that angel's word from heaven is carrying, hey, peace on earth. And the angel said, fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid, guys. So that's for us. You can have fearless living. The first words out of God's messenger, the angel, was fear not. And so then, Pam, what would number six be? God's love. Mm. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He empowers us to give. And without the ability to give, we truly can't give because it's uh, more blessed to give. So that's what Jesus yeah. said, right? More God's blessed love. to give than receive. So God's love is his gift for you right now. You can open it right now. And I want to land on this one, Stephanie. Number seven, what's a gift that God has for everybody right now? Suddenly miracles. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. It's one that we actively yeah. live for, right, babe? Right. Yeah. The Christmas message is the great expectation of suddenly miracles. The shepherd said, let's go see this thing that's come to pass. Oh, I love it. When good news is the focus, people start seeing miracles from God. It's true. Right? It's yeah. true. When we turn our attention on him, people start seeing that. The great miracle, which is Jesus' birth, empowers every other miracle. And we've got a list that we're believing yes. for. Yes. And his birth empowers every other miracle. All things are possible. Amen. Nothing's impossible with God. It's true. Come, come on, listen. Just right where you're at right now. Just I don't care if you're in a living room, if you're in a garage, if you're in a church building. Right where you're at, just say this out loud. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing, Nothing is, is impossible with God. And then say this, say, all things are possible with God. All, all things, things are, are possible, possible with God. God. That's your new year. When you open up those gifts, when you take those gifts from heaven, you activate God's goodness in your life. My friend, if you haven't received Jesus as your personal Savior, do not attempt to take another year on of life without Jesus and without his joy. We all need the source of life, and that source is Jesus. The wise men, guess what they did? They followed the start of Jesus. The shepherds, guess what they did? They followed the instructions to Jesus. The rich, the poor, the young, the old were all in need of following the instructions, the word of God, to the great joy, which is Jesus, the answer to life. You and me too, all of us, Eloy, Stephanie, Pam, me, we all need Jesus. So pray this prayer with me and let Jesus begin to fill your life right now. Dear Lord Jesus, you came to earth as a child, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
so that I could be adopted into God's family. You lived a life without sin, died on the cross for me in my place. You rose up from the grave, forgiven me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Be the guiding light of my life. Show me the way to honor you. Fill me with your joy now. All in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. That's so good. You've just prayed a life-changing prayer that can affect not just your next year, but your eternity. You know, when you put off this mortality, you know where you're going, who you're going to be with. God is the king of your life. Jesus is the Lord of your life. And you have an eternity in heaven with God. Isn't that beautiful? Praise God. You're in the family of God now and with all family benefits. So you just added the most necessary ingredient, as Pam's talking about ingredients doing her bake. You just added the most necessary ingredient for all of eternity, for living life with joy, a personal relationship with Jesus. So do this for us. Please go to the Jesus button on our website. You can get some more directions, some help, some healthy ingredients for living with joy in your life. You have to be persistent, right? You've got to be persistent and consistent to go after God, all that God has for you. Never, ever, ever give up. Have that kind of attitude. And so now, right before we have communion together, I want you to continue to worship God as the family. You're a child of God. Worship God as part of the family. Give him praise and glory and lift your voice and sing praise. From the darkness I called your name Into darkness your mercy came You called me out, lifted me up Great is your love. You bore my weakness, you took my shame, buried my burdens in fields of grace. You called me out, you lifted me up. How great is your love! From the heights of heaven.
never been, there will never be a God like you, a love so true, there has never been, there will never be a God like you, a love so true, there has never been. Be a God like you, a love so true. There has never been, there will never be a God like you, a love so The God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he 
Before we do that and Pastor Stephen comes back to lead us in communion, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you, first of all, to Eloy and Steph, who not only have been uh, involved with us as a church family in worship for the past year almost, but even in their sharing their thoughts this morning. I want to share a couple of sentences from a letter we received yesterday to the church family from uh, Steph and Eloy, and it says to, uh, to All Nations Church, Eloy and I want to send our heartfelt thoughts and gratitude as 2020 comes to a close. What an honor it has been to partner with All Nations Church 
in sharing God's good news in Sudbury and beyond. We have loved attending church with you every week and very much consider ourselves to be a part of the ANC family. We celebrate God's faithfulness that during a tumultuous year, God has brought increase. And he certainly has. And we want to take this time to thank Steph and Eli for helping us uh, through difficult times as we migrated from mainly a, a, a live audience setting to an online church setting and through the radio as we've worked through the pandemic this year. Thank you so much for your Christian service, for your faithfulness uh, to All Nations Church and to the Lord. And in your future ministry endeavors, Steph and Eli, we pray God's richest blessing upon you. I'd like to say to Pam, my dear friend Pam, I think your parents gave you the wrong name. They should have called you Joy. And as we heard this morning, you are the distributor of joy, and you are the epitome of that Bible verse, rejoice in the Lord always. You have taught me in the past year, Pam, to be joyful, and we love you for that. We thank you for your ministry as you stood beside Pastor Stephen, and we thank you that uh, uh, where you are, you radiate the joy of the Lord. A word of advice for anybody that's listening, if you see Pam in a crowd, just go stand beside her and you can absorb some of that joy that she radiates. That's the raison d'etre of her life, that joyful person that she is. I would like to uh, recall the words of Pastor Stephen about a year ago right now. Whereas we as elders had talked with him about coming and being a minister in All Nations Church, and he said, I can give you 2020. And here it is, the end of 2020, as the year winds down. And I think it's uh, somewhat of an irony is that the first Sunday, uh, Pastor Stephen, you were scheduled to speak, March the 15th, we got a, a word that week from our provincial government that the churches were closed due to the pandemic. And here we are on the final Sunday of uh, 2020, your concluding message, and we enter lockdown once again. But to your words, Pastor Stephen, you would say, seize the moment, seize the opportunity. And what an opportunity this has been to stretch ourselves into a different form of ministry. And we stand here together as a church united and singing God's praise together because through the changes, God has made us better as a church for that. I look at what you model for us, Pastor Stephen, and the first thing that I would say is that you are a student of the Word. You live God's Word. You breathe God's Word. You study God's Word. You speak God's Word. You can hardly say a sentence without bringing God's Word into that. And as an example to us, just as Paul was an example to the churches around Asia and the early New Christian Church, you are an example to us to get into the Word and live and read and breathe God's Word. And maybe we as a church family could endeavor to do that in a better way, being modeled by Pastor Stephen to be a student of the Word. Secondly, I would say that you have taught me particularly to pray expectantly. We've talked about that a little bit, and, and yes, I was raised in a family that prayed, and I was taught to pray, but I really learned this year through Pastor Stephen to pray expectantly that God will give an answer. And I could share some story, stories with you about that, but we'll save that for another day. What I want to say to Steph and Eloy, to Pam and Stephen, thank you for 2020. Thank you for the gift of your ministry in the midst of us. Thank you, for Pastor Stephen, for being our pastor, our interim pastor through this year. And if I could speak on behalf of those that are listening today on the radio, that are listening or watching from home online, from the five or six, seven hundred people that listen and watch regularly week by week, we love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. I'm going to ask Pastor Stephen now if he would lead us in communion. Jesus is seated on the throne of heaven and has the ability to make all things new. Isn't that good news going into the new year? He can make all things new. You read that for yourself in the book of Revelation 21, verse 5. What a special way to possess a new year by having communion with God. Oh, my. We get to call Jesus affectionately to our remembrance, take every failure, every disappointment, 
every fear, every torment from this past year and lay it all down at the foot of the cross. Just say, I lay it all down, Jesus. I let it all go. Now in place of the pain, the sorrow, the grief, place of the sin and the failure, I receive your life, your blessing, your grace, your mercy for the year ahead. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 says this, For I received from the Lord himself that which I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in affectionate remembrance of me. Jesus, we thank you for your body that was broken for us. And right now, we do you honor, Lord. And what a precious way to go into this new year. But Lord, having communion together. Lord, we receive this bread representing your body to the glory of God. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. Wow. Jesus, we thank you for this cup and all that it represents. Your shed blood, that means that, Lord, you have redeemed us from the curse. As we go into this new year, Lord, we again appropriate every benefit from your shed blood. We receive it to the glory of God the Father in Jesus' name. Now, I just want to take advantage of this moment in time as we've been focusing our attention on the broken body of Jesus and the shed blood of Jesus. What a perfect time just to pray for any one of you that need a healing in your body. In fact, right now, I'm just going to ask Stephanie if she would just lead us in a prayer for your body. If you need a healing in your body, just close your eyes and receive this prayer of faith that sets the captive free. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, we're so thankful for the gift that you sent in Jesus. Jesus, we're so grateful for your obedience and all that your sacrifice means for our day-to-day -day lives. And we ask in Jesus' name, believing, believing in the gift that you gave, believing in the sacrifice that you made, that by your stripes, we are healed. Yes. So I thank you that even in this very moment, doesn't matter if it's a physical ailment that started yesterday or something that started decades ago, you are able in a moment to bring miraculous and total healing. So we thank you for your healing pouring over from people at the top of their heads all the way through their body, through their mind, through their soul. Thank you that healing goes into everything every place. Father, thank you that you even came to bear our sorrows. So I thank you for emotional healing yes. being released right now, for minds being aligned to your truth and minds being healed. We receive the amazing gift that you have offered to us in your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, Yes. amen. God bless you, my friend. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. We love you. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support and for helping to get God's good news to others. Sign up online for today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift Pastor Stephen sends directly to your email. At All Nations Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings over you. Remember, Jesus is Lord.